Hello friends, I am Dr. Aniket Pavnoji and you are watching Basic Chemistry. Welcome to the next lecture of Bonding in Coordination Compounds. In the last lecture, we have seen measurement of 10 dq and what are the factors that affect 10 dq value. In this lecture, we will study effects of crystal field splitting on properties of transition metal complexes. Let's begin with magnetic properties. We know that there are two types of ligand fields weak ligand field and strong ligand field. For weak ligand field, I am considering the example of FeF64- and for strong ligand field, I am taking example of FeCn64-. Here F- that is the fluorine is the weak ligand and cyanide is the strong ligand. In both the cases, the oxidation state of central metal atom that is ion is determined as plus 2. Now Fe atomic number 26 its electronic configuration is argon 3d6 4s2. In plus 2 oxidation state, there are total 6 electrons in 5d orbitals. In case of strong ligand field, these 5d orbitals split into two levels T2g and Eg. In case of strong ligand field, the 10 dq parameter is higher than the pairing energy. When we fill the electrons, the first three electrons get occupied into T2g orbital as the gap between the T2g and Eg orbital is higher, the 4th, 5th and 6th electron also gets occupied into the T2g orbital. That is how we get low spin complex or spin paired complex. In case of weak ligand field, the 5d orbitals again split into T2g and Eg orbitals, but the gap between the T2g and Eg is less than pairing energy. Due to this, the first three electrons get occupied into the T2g orbital but now the fourth electron goes into the Eg orbital. Now all the 5d orbitals are singly occupied and the pairing takes place now from T2g orbital. The sixth electron gets occupied into the lower lying T2g orbital. In this way, we get high spin complex or spin free complex. We can see in case of strong ligand field, all the electrons are paired since it is a diamagnetic complex. Whereas in case of weak ligand field, we get highly paramagnetic complex. As there are four unpaired electrons, its magnetic moment can be determined using formula under root n into n plus 2. This is spin only formula as the orbital motion in case of transition metal complexes is quenched. As there are four unpaired electrons, the magnetic moment is calculated as 4.89 Bohr's magneton. Let's move to the next property that is thermodynamic and related effects. In this, we will study first ionic radii. These are the transition metals which are situated at the center of the periodic table. When we plot the graph of ionic radii versus the number of electrons in the d orbital, we have to consider two cases. The first case is strong ligand field and the second is weak ligand field. When we see the periodic table, when we move from left to right, the atomic size goes on decreasing. But due to crystal field splitting, it affects the variation of this ionic radii. In case of strong ligand field, the first six electrons get occupied into the lower lying T2g orbital. The effect of this is the ionic radii goes on decreasing from scandium to ion. And once all the T2g orbitals are occupied, the next four electrons goes into the Eg orbital. Now in the earlier lectures, we have seen that these Eg orbitals are along the axis and face the ligands directly. Due to this repulsion, the ionic radii goes on increasing from ion to zinc. This is the variation of ionic radii in low spin complexes or in case of strong ligand field. In case of weak ligand field, the first three electron goes into the T2g orbital. Therefore, the variation is same as that of strong ligand field. But the fourth electron goes into the Eg orbital which causes repulsion. The ionic radii increases from chromium to manganese. Now all the five orbitals are singly occupied. Now in case of weak ligand field, the 6th, 7th and 8th electron gets occupied into the lower lying T2g orbital. The ionic radii decreases from Fe to cobalt to nickel. After this, the 9th and 10th electron goes into the Eg orbital. The size increases as in case of strong ligand field. This is the variation in ionic radii in weak ligand field. Let's move to the lattice energy of transition metal complexes. When we plot the graph of lattice energies of the transition metal complexes versus the CFSE of dihalides of first transition series, we should get a straight lines for iodides, bromides, 
chlorides and fluorides of transition metals. But instead of getting a straight line, we get double humped curve for all the iodides, bromides, chlorides and fluorides of transition metals. From this double humped curve, we can easily understand that D0, D5 and D10 configurations, they are on the straight line. This is because they have zero CFSE. Other than these, the other ions, they have some CFSE. Therefore, they do not lie on the straight line, but it results into a double humped curve. In this way, there are two maximas are observed. The first maxima is at 1IDM2+, that is D3 electronic configuration. And the second maxima is at nickel, that is D8 electronic configuration. This is because in case of weak ligand field, D3 and D8 electronic configurations have maximum CFSE, that is 12DQ. Similar results, that is a double humped curve, is also observed in case of hydration energies of transition metals. These are the effects of crystal field splitting on magnetic properties, ionic radii, lattice energies and hydration energies of transition metal complexes. In the next lecture, we will see crystal field splitting in tetrahedral complexes, tetragonally distorted octahedral complexes and square planar complexes. If you like my lecture, click on like, do share and subscribe my channel. If you want to ask something, mention it in the comment box. Don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my new videos and keep watching basic chemistry. Thank you.